Hey, what's up? It's me, Gazbot, and this is the Horror Production Report Update number 15! Yeah! Woo! So anyway, uh, got kind of an interesting lighting. I, I realize I'm doing a lot of handheld outside, wrong side of the good camera phone kind of stuff. So I wanted to use my video camera, which is what I'm using now, which is usually when it's a little bit better quality. Uh, and I set up one of my lighting, like, things. Actually, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Ah, uh, see, it's like an actual light for like a movie. And this is on a tripod on my desk. But I should have at least one other light set up, and I don't because I'm being a little bit lazy. So you get this sort of two-phase split. This is all irrelevant. This is a six-day update, shorter than my usual almost two weeks, um, and that's going to become... A, I'll explain why at the end of the video, um, but I'm almost out of power. Hmm, I should plug my phone camera. Bust. Awkward edit, and uh, we're back. I have power. Plugged it in and everything. So, um, one thing I wanted to talk about before I get into the new period is uh, I kind of had a weird little anecdote last time, but the video was running so long, it was... I think it was close to 40 minutes, and while I don't mind longer videos, um, I think like 30 is probably the perfect spot, at least for me when I watch videos, that's kind of what I like. So when I went to Japantown, I, and I put up, it's funny because I put up clips of uh, an Ultraman chalk drawing, which I had done, um, where you had to kill some time and there were kids and other people drawing with chalk, uh, and they left, and there was a dollar store right there, so my buddy bought some chalk and we all started doing it, and I was like, okay, I'm drawing Ultraman. So I'm not the only one drawing, but while I'm drawing, for some reason, this kid, like, beelines for me. Like, he wasn't there, I don't know where he came from. Uh, and he came over and didn't have any interest, really, in what I was drawing. I mean, he kind of, like, was like, oh, yeah. And he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, do you know, um, do you know that movie? I'm like, what? <laughs> like, he just starts the conversation like this. He's like, it's a, it's a movie, uh, it's like, a, a, a uh, something, I, it's like a scary movie. I'm like... There's like uh, so many scary movies. I'm sorry, kid. I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, oh, okay. But then he shows interest in what I'm doing. He's like, what are you drawing? I'm like, oh, this is Ultraman. He's a superhero. Oh, I never heard of him. I'm like, oh, he's from Japan. He gets real big, whatever. And he's like, oh, okay. And that's, you know, sort of sort of going in a normal direction. But then he went back to this movie. He's like, yeah, so you never saw this movie. Do you like movies? I'm like, yeah, I like movies. He's like, oh, it's crazy that this guy, he, like, they want him to join them. And he doesn't want to join them. But they're like, you have to join us. And I'm like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't know how I could know this. He's like, yeah, and then his hand turns bad, so he has to, he cuts off his own hand. And I'm like, wait a minute, are you talking about Army of Darkness? Uh, or, uh, and he's like, no, I'm like, or Evil Dead? He's like, yeah, Evil Dead, that's the one. I'm like, what, and, and I love Evil Dead, you know, um, but I'm like, what, and this kid was like five or eight, somewhere, you know, like old enough that he was at school, but he's still very small, and I'm like, what? I, I, yeah, how did you even see this? He's like, oh, my dad shows it to me. And I'm like, oh, he's like, yeah, blah, 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 Evil Dead, and I like all kinds of horror movies, and And he's like, I think Stephen King wrote that. And I'm like, I don't think Stephen King wrote that. He's like, yeah, Stephen King writes horror books and movies, like the one about the dog, and the dog doesn't like anybody, and he attacks everyone. And I'm like, you mean Cujo? He's like, yeah, Cujo, Stephen King wrote that. And he wrote the other, the evil one. I'm like, he did write Cujo, but he didn't write Evil Dead. He's like, yeah, because he wrote the other one where they're at a dance and the lady gets blood all over her. <laughs> I'm like, Carrie? Are you talking about Carrie? He's like, yeah, and she gets mad and does stuff. And I'm like, wow, yeah, that was Stephen King too, but Evil Dead isn't Stephen King. He's like, I think it was. And I'm like, no, look, kid, it's not. It, uh, it was Sam Raimi, Robert Tapper, you know, some other people were involved, but it was not Stephen King. He does a lot of stuff. He didn't do this particular movie. And he gave me like a... Well, all right, I'm not going to argue about it anymore, but I know it's Stephen King. And he kept going on, I'm like, are you a little bit young to be watching this kind of stuff? And he's like, well, my dad shows it to me. He's like, he shows it to me before bed, and, you know, I get scared and have nightmares and can't sleep. But he says it also matter-of-factly, I'm like, oh, this kid. And, and he was just this weird, interesting little kid uh, who I went from being annoyed that this random person was talking to me to be really interested and enamored with him because he was, like, one of the most interesting children I've ever spoken with. And he knew a lot of random stuff. And, like, like uh, for example, there's the, the Peace Pagoda, which I took a video in, and there's a ladder hanging down, and he's just and it's high up. And he's like, do you think they'll need to paint that soon? And I'm like, what, the ladder? And I look at it, and it's kind of flaking, and it's got some rust and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they probably will. He's like, because it has that rust, rust is on it, right? I'm like, yeah. I said, yeah, and that's dangerous, because if, you know, if you cut yourself on that, you could get sick. And he goes, 
yeah, tetanus. Or no, he goes, yeah, lockjaw. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, you have to get a tetanus shot. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like tetanus shots. I'm like, how do you know about lockjaw? He's like, my dad told me. I'm like, this kid's dad must just be like, here's all the horrible things in the world, son. And here's movies that celebrate them with comedic twists. And um, some not so much. Good night. You know, like, it was pretty funny. I, I forget the rest, but every interaction, every question he gave me turned out to be this crazy adult answer I didn't expect. And every time I thought I was sort of telling him something new, he's like, yeah, I already know more about that than you do, buddy. So anyway, that was a throwback to last time. This time, uh, today, I'm getting an early start with my walk. It's uh, a little after 8, but you can see the sky is still somewhat light. Um, did not get a lot done on the horror today. I think I got about 45 minutes inking the first panel of uh, page 6. More progress than when I was working on just boots, because it's background characters, but again, it's... Uh, well, actually, this part is not slow going. It's just uh, I didn't put a lot of work in today. Uh, I hope to do some more after my walk. Um, I'm trying to, I've been, you know, this is another ongoing thing. In addition to improving myself as an artist, I'm constantly trying to be in better shape and constantly failing. But the de the uh, war of attrition continues as I eat, you know, a ton of pasta and then go for a walk. Um, I'll go ahead and show you what I did, uh, where it was before and where it is now, that panel. Here. But. Uh, today I did have some excuses. I had to go to the dentist and get a filling and that was terrible. And then I had to do some shopping, uh, like the pet store and things like that, which took some time. And I also had to go to the post office to send out an eBay auction. As I said, I've been sell selling some of my things on eBay. Uh, and also a print, uh, of Bebop from Ninja Turtles I had done that was up on my Etsy store that I sold to Mr. Mike Emirates. Uh, so yay, thank you for buying that for me, uh, Mike. Uh, I appreciate that you enjoyed my work enough to buy it. Uh, even, a, even when someone just likes it, it's nice. So if someone buys it, that's even better. Uh, so, but there's a whole little side tangent on that. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording now. So Tuesday, I knew I was gonna have a lot of stuff going on this week. I didn't have a ton going on Tuesday. Uh, and so I did get two and a half hours inking done on the horror, uh, which I was pretty happy about, and it went a little bit easier than the last time. So uh, I think I have something. I'll throw it up. What? <sighs> then Wednesday, I didn't get any work on the horror done. It was, uh, I had to do, well, had to, had to want to do a commercial, which I had talked about. Now, it ended up being less glamorous than I thought. Uh, I thought it would be sort of some extra work. Maybe if I was lucky, I'd get a line. Um, and it sort of was, and I didn't get a line or anything, but it was, like, my friend's dad has an ad agency, and they were doing a pro this, like, spray wax product, a washless water, you can tell I'm a great pitchman. <laughs> I don't even remember what it was. It was like a waterless spray for, for cars. Uh, and, but anyway, they brought in a bunch of, like, cool, uh, retro cars and, and you know, high-end cars or whatever, and they wanted to show the product and stuff, but the byproduct of that was we had about eight cars that needed to be washed with this stuff. Now, I was one of, uh, you know, three people on my specific team, and then there was two other people that were helping out, so it wasn't like I was busting my butt all day washing cars, but I did actually have to wash some cars with this stuff. But I was also outside in the sun all day, which, as we all know, I love. Regardless, it was a fun experience, and I, I, you know, I held the the light thing at one point for the actress, and my buddy actually got to have a line and stuff. So I'll throw up a couple pictures and uh, and show my the lovely acting chops of my friend pretending to be surprised at the car, how good it looks after he just washed it. Seven thirty, forty-five ish on Wednesday, and it turns out I am going to go do that commercial. Um, it's like nine to five. I think I'm an extra in a car wash commercial? I don't know all the details, it just sounded like something I've never done, and it pays, so I am going. I'm tired, I haven't eaten. Uh, I think there's breakfast there, hopefully, otherwise I have some candy. I'm a candy man. Yeah, I feel tired, but I, I look polished. I shaved, gelled my hair, looking like a superstar, so that in the background I could be going, or whatever the heck I'm supposed to be doing. Anyway, onward and outward, and upward? Forward, go. Wednesday, just got done cleaning the Sanford and Son truck and mountains. Washing cars, washing cars, walking in a blazing hot parking lot, washing cars. 
over here, you can see they're filming. I'm washing cars. So that was cool, and I got paid and everything, and, and I like doing things like that because it's a, just a different experience type of thing. Um, and so then, that was Wednesday. Thursday and Friday I had character jobs. I had to go to a office where I've worked, uh, I think I've done it now three years in a row, and they have two different offices, and everybody gets promoted gets a caricature in the break room. And it's a little bit weird because it's sort of a half surprise, so it's always like, hey, we're excited about this, but the employees, I'm, the, the people that hire me, but then the employees that I'm doing are always like, wait, what's this? Am I, I have a meeting I have to get to, and so <laughs> I end up drawing a lot of them from like their ID badges that they've given me and stuff. So it's, it's, it's weird. It's, it's a fun way to reward the employees, but the employees seem to never quite be on the same page with knowing they need to set aside some time or whatever. But, you know, it's, it's a thing. They brought me back a couple years in a row, so I'm happy to do the work. Uh, Um, but that did interfere with my day because, you know, it was like an hour or two each day and then travel time and just whatever. I mean, it didn't eat up my whole day, but it was definitely something that took part of it. So, Wednesday was commercial. Thursday character job, I also had to take the cats to the vet. So I did one hour, one hour and five minutes, uh, one hour on, on, on inking page one, uh, six again. Uh, and then Friday was a little bit of a longer job, um, but I didn't have to take the cats to the vet, so I did an hour and 15 Here minutes. Here you can see what I had so for the first panel, page one, was sort of done. But the piping on the floor is like being weird. This is the background. I had it on a separate layer. And it sort of looked correct and in perspective and all looked fine. But the piping was weird. So then I just erased it. And it made it not as correct, but it looked more correct. Well, it's Saturday. Welcome back. It's caricature week, apparently. Uh, it's my third day in a row doing a caricature job. Although this one is only an hour, uh, but it's outside, which is terrible. Supposedly there's shade. Uh, I have to bring my own chairs. This lady has contacted me like 10 times before the job, which is usually not a good sign, but hopefully it's only an hour. Or how bad could it be? Uh, that is what I'm going to go do now. Uh, I did already do an hour and a half on the horror, so I will show you what I did. Um, I mucked around with the first panel a little bit, even though it was pretty much done. I just lightened up the text and whatever. Uh, but then I started work on panel two, uh, getting boots done, and then working on most of the, the train background stuff. So here's that. And I'm off to caricature land again. Well, just like that, it is Saturday night. The job actually went a lot e better than I thought it would. The lady was easy to work with. Uh, I was supposed to get paid in a check. She gave me cash, which is always nice. Got a tip, which I didn't expect for a one-hour job. Um, and there was no crazy demands or anything. And I, I didn't have any last minute, oh, can you do one more? It was just a super easy job. And actually, when I do these character jobs, um, sometimes I'm like really happy with what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm not so happy with what I'm doing. You know, some of it's mediocre. I'm doing. This was one of those jobs where I was going really quick, getting the kids done, just black and white faces. Uh, I was getting them all done in like two, three minutes, which is not like kind of the amount of time you want to spend. But they were all coming out looking like the kids and being cute. And it was just, I was like in a really good zone. I would have liked to have taken some pictures with them. Uh, but A, I was short on time, and B, you know, people are weird about kids stuff, so you have to, like, get the parents' permission and check with them and everything, and I didn't feel like going through all that, so no pictures to show you, unfortunately. Uh, I also did not work on the heart anymore after I got back. I ended up just doing a bunch of other stuff. Um, tomorrow is Tokusatsu Mania, so you'll probably see some clips of some Japanese shows in the next segment. Uh, and then I will try to do some uh, work on the horror tomorrow after everybody leaves. Did an hour and a half inking on panel page six still. Uh, Sunday was Tokusatsu Mania. Here's a couple clips of Tokusatsu Mania! Oh, 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 oh. Like, I thought he was trying to cross, but he's just, like, making circles. Like, let me get as much water into my, uh, engine as I can. Oh, here it goes. Whip it! It really does sound like he farts when he steps. <laughs> that was insane. Good light. 
Oh, I thought the engine was knocking, like he needed oil. <laughs> I just made <faked> drown. It's the worst joke on you. Gross. Random thing to stranger. Did ever. <laughs> this kid just got straight tried oh, into an awful rage. Why the thing? He didn't even cry. Seven. 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 Oh, oh my god, like, this thing wasn't powerful enough. I don't know how government uses this monster, like... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he's one one for four. What? Oh, oh, oh. Subarashi. Anyway. <laughs> Wow, that's I, that was a whole new level with the tie. I became Gene Simmons. Wow, up all night, sleep all day. Wait, that's slaughter, not kiss. Kiss is like I want rock and roll. Oh, okay. Wow. Hey, you're welcome and sorry. Thanks. That's the moon. Moon. So it's Sunday after Tokusatsu Mania. I'm going for a walk on a, a path. It's sort of light and dark. It's uh, you probably can't see it, but there's that sort of yeah, you can't see it. I'm gonna. Yeah, there's this sort of like orange on the horizon and then dark in the sky. And it's a thing where you look out the window and it looks like it's nighttime, but you walk outside and it's actually day. There's a running man, but not on a short side, a different running man. Um, so anyway, I have not worked on the horror yet. I did, took such mania. Gonna work on it when I get back. Uh, make a cup of decaf coffee and hopefully put in an hour or two. Um, I want to finish the page six that I'm currently on. So, Sunday, after Tokusatsu Mania, I did an hour and 45 minutes, inking page six, finished it. Page six, donezo! Now, I still gotta go back in with grays and lettering and a few other details, but all the inking is done, and that's kind of what I'm doing, you know, this phase. And I've also been happy that I've broken up the phases, because I go back and forth, like, oh, maybe I should just finish it, because, like, that first page, I did all the grays. Uh, I didn't do the lettering, but I find, just like I finished the writing, and it made it more freeing to go in and do the storyboards. I kind of try to compartmentalize it like I'm different people doing different jobs because I, I've been part of an assembly on process with animation and a few other things. And there, there's two advantages to this. One, it allows me to focus on the task at hand and not have to multitask. I'm not a big fan of multitasking. I think it's, it's detrimental to the creative process. Uh, I think it's better to focus on one you know, thing than have to worry about 15 projects. Now, I very rarely get that luxury, but I could at least create it in my own project. Now, two, um, it, well, three, I guess there's three, three benefits. Two, it, it forces me to take some time away and then have a fresh look each time I look at the page, so that, you know, there might be weeks, months, whatever, before I get back to the page for the next phase, and I might notice some mistakes I didn't notice the first time, or I might be over some of the mistakes I thought I saw, and just kind of fresh eyes in general. You know, the things that are bad may not seem as bad, and maybe if they do, then I'll fix them at that time. The third thing is, it, like I said, it makes me feel like I'm doing different jobs. So when I was writing, my job was to just write it, get it as good as I could, give it to the artist. Hey, I'm the layout guy. I'm going to do some thumbnails and kind of figure out the stuff. Hey, some of this writing's a little wonky, but I'll fix it in the, in the thumbnail phase. Uh, do some rough pencils on top of that. Now I'm the inker, and I'm like, man, some of these pencils are really whacked out, and I'll kind of redraw them a little bit with the inks, and I'll be like, ah, he kind of messed that up. And, I'll, and so I'm like, 
divorced from it, my ego is divorced from it, where I'm correcting as though I was the next guy or girl, you know, on the, on the production line and just saying, okay, I have to stay true to what came before, but improve it and fix any mistakes that I can. And so that's what I'm doing. And so I figure then the next, the gray phase, again, if I see any major ink mistakes, I'll fix them at that point. And then I'll go in with the lettering and, you know, maybe I'll throw a bubble over something that looks terrible. Uh, but I am happy with the way I've broken it down this way. And if I ever had the money or resources or a partner to take another part of this, I'm already set to do that. It's not like I'd be like, well, I'm going to finish up page one through five. You could do six. I could be like, okay, ink these or letter these, you know. And I'm not doing that right now, but I feel like why not be in, you know, it's just one more benefit of this system, which isn't for everybody, I realize. Um, but again, it also, I've mentioned this before, I feel like when I lose my way uh, creatively, when I have a hard time making time for it, when I'm not sure what I'm doing, any uncertainty I find is much easier to power through when I'm like, look, I know where this issue is ending. I know where the whole story is ending, but I have a full script to the end of this issue. I even have rough layouts to the end of this issue, you know, so it's like, it's easier to just be like, well, just follow what that other guy did before. You know, past Gaz set me up for, you know, at least completion, if not success. So th that's that's the way I do that, and I'm pretty happy about that. Um, now, for this period, which uh, was six days, I did eight hours, which is more than an hour, less than an hour and a half. So, you know, decent, but again, I'm not thrilled with it. Now, uh, I'm going to try for the next period to do... Uh, I, I want to call it like hardcore mode or intense mode, but really it's just regular what I should be doing mode. This week coming up, I don't have any major things to do. As I had mentioned before, I have a few little things, um, but I'm going to try to get, like I said, you know, a page. I, if I did a page a day, that would be awesome. But if I do, you know, half a page a day or three quarters of a page a day, so that by the end of the week I had two or three pages, that would also be good. And I really what I should be doing is putting in eight hours plus a day on the horror. Especially, well, and I, I know I can't do that every day, but this week in particular, I don't have any client work. Well, I do have a page of kids, which I should be doing, but uh, I'm waiting on a, a payment, and, and then I'll finish that up. But I don't have any pressing client work. Let's put it that way. I also have another character I have to do, but I don't have to do that until next week. So I'm getting sidetracked here. The point is, I don't have any work I have to do. I don't have anybody visiting from out of town. I don't have any social obligations. I don't have to take the cast of it. I don't have any major house stuff I have to take care of. In effect, I have this week off completely. And so what I should do is from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, be working on the horror. Um, and I've been in this position before and I don't do that. Because, okay, this is, this is a, a not safe for work. This is, I'm going to allow myself to curse and rant. So if there's children in the room, remove them, put on headphones. This is not safe for work time. I'm not going to say anything too horrible. I'm not going to get into sexuality or anything. But I'm going to allow myself to say some curse words. Okay. And this is, this is me lecturing myself. This is me if I was talking to someone who told them my situation and was like, yeah, and I can't get it done, blah, blah, blah. Now this is how, and this actually, to be fair, this is not what I would say to them. Because I've tried to get more diplomatic and more understanding and more empathetic and more just, you know, do what you can and try to be a positive force in the art world. I've tried to be that on the outside even if I, it conflicts with what I think inside because I, I don't always have the best thoughts inside so I try to, you know, keep them to myself. But this is, if I saw myself what I would think to myself and what I would want to say to myself. Okay. A dramatic action. Well, I was going to say reenactment, but that doesn't make sense. So, okay. W what are you doing? D wake up and draw. Eat your breakfast. Start working. I don't care. Well, because why? Why not? You need to watch three episodes of Ninja Turtles? No, you spend a half hour waking up. That's more than enough time. You start working. You have housework to do? Is it super pressing? You could do it later. You, oh, you need some exercise? Just eat a little bit less. Go for a walk after dinner. Just get your shit done, dude! What the fuck? This is like a super opportunity. People out there are dying to have the free time to be able to do this. And I don't have to worry. The bills are paid. They're fine. Don't even sweat it. And you don't have any pressing work. You don't have kids. You have nothing stopping you. But your own pathetic, like, cowardice or your laziness. You're not a pot smoker. What the fuck is your excuse? Oh, gee, I think uh, I better vacuum. No, really? Really you need to vacuum. You can fucking vacuum anytime. Draw your fucking comic, you asshole. Look, just do it. It's, oh, I have to redraw this panel 15 fucking times. Well, that's your stupid problem, okay? And if it's taken you 17 hours to do a page, what the fuck? I don't give a shit. That's your neurosis, and that's your stupidity, and that's your perfectionism. And if that's how you want to do it, great. But then put in those fucking hours, put in those 17 hours, and get a page done. And if it takes you two and a half days, three days to get a page, good. You've got five days, that's a page done where you redraw something a hundred times. Or you could be like a normal person, redraw it once or twice, hope for the best, and do a page a day. 
any way you slice it, you should have easily, easily eight hours. Even if you take a break for lunch and then you're done and you have dinner, you hang out with your wife, you watch some TV, you go for a walk, you do all other life stuff, then you can vacuum if you want. Go ahead, but why are you prioritizing everything else? You get, oh, I don't want to draw. Well, I feel, I'll feel bad if I play a video game or if I play with some toys, but you know what? Well, if I do the dishes, I don't feel bad, or if I, uh, you know, like, oh, I'll go for a bike ride. That's good for me. This stuff is still procrastination. It's a little bit more upwardly mobile procrastination. It's a little bit more socially acceptable procrastination. It's the equivalent of being a functional drunk. It's like, well, yeah, I drink, but I can make it to work, and, you know, like, that's what I'm, that's, I'm a, I'm a functional procrastinator. I have functional laziness where I, do things. I, I create the illusion of movement. I'm like, oh, I'm doing stuff. I got here's a list of 15 things I did today. Some of it was housework. Some of it's right. You know, oh, I studied some more Japanese and I made some phone calls and I sent a letter to my mother and all that's great. Join fucking comic. What the fuck? What's wrong with you? Why do you hate it so much? Just do it. Even if you do hate it, it's too late. You're committed. Fucking do it. God. It's <laughs> now I feel like I'm what's his face. Uh, you know, just do it. Bah! Shia LaBeouf. And that, that video, everybody makes fun of it, but like, I kind of, I'm like, eh, well, he's, he's right, you know. Uh, I was watching BoJack, uh, this is the end of the Not Safe for Work portion, by the way, that was the majority of my bile. And, and most of it's not super constructive, it just comes down to what are you doing, just draw, stop, all this other stuff. So that's my, gonna be my goal this next period coming up, is to just do that, and just work, and stop, and put everything else aside, even if it's to the detriment. Because it is stuff I could put aside, even if I tell myself I can't. Uh, I was watching BoJack Horseman, which is a surprisingly good show. It's, it's kind of depressing, but in exactly the way I like. And there's a scene or two of BoJack, uh, and these are mild spoilers if you care, where he's like trying to write a book and stuff, and he's just like, I gotta write a book. Oh man, I got no, oh, well I can't, I gotta clean off my desk. Oh, I've knocked stuff on the floor, well I better vacuum it. Oh, the vacuum's dirty, better buy a new vacuum. And I'm like, that's me, that is so me, that is exactly me. I'm gonna do everything in the world to not sit down and do the thing I want to do. I think I want to do. I don't know, <laughs> you know, but I've committed to doing it. See, and that's also part of why I've committed and made myself accountable because so many times I've started a project, got excited, and not finished it, and then felt terrible. So, as terrible as I might feel forcing myself to do this thing which I'm supposed to love, I will get it done and then I will feel satisfied. If not elated and great and happy like I should, ah, <laughs> man! I'll at least have completed it and I will have the satisfaction of here's a book, I finished what I started, and you know, I go to conventions and I sell prints and I see other people with books and like, you know, I try to not judge myself against other people, but I can't. And I see other people that are better than me that I'm like terrible. And I see other people that are worse than me and I'm like, well, at least I'm better than them. And like, that's totally wrong-headed, but there's a certain percentage of you can't help it. You know, the same way you judge your looks against other people or you judge, you know, you, you try not to do it. And as a, as a somewhat enlightened person, I try to, I have these thoughts and I try to push them out, you know, and not dwell on them and not, you know, make that part of my personality. But I can't. Uh, there's definitely a part of me that would look at these people that had books out and they're like, they're not good. They're like, the writing makes no sense and the art is terrible and they're like, you know, some 20 year old, like, I did it, I'm an artist. And it's like, oh, you suck, you know. But they made a book and I didn't. I'm sitting there selling my prints, uh, you know, of, of mostly of stuff I don't own. And there they are with an actual book. So they're better than me. They win. And this goes back to the whole, you know, something that is terrible that is finished is better than something that's great that's not. And usually it's good is better than, uh, good is the enemy of great or finished is better than, you know, perfect and all that. But I'm going ahead and saying garbage that is finished is better than greatness that is not. Because anything that's not finished is pointless and, and masturbatory for yourself and, and who cares? You know, it's just like, I like being an artist and I don't, I've never been an artsy guy. That's the thing. I think of myself as a commercial artist. I've, how I am now is the most artsy I've ever been in terms of like my viewpoint, my emotion, and wanting to satisfy myself. Like I always was just like, hey, I could get paid to draw. Great. I have no interest in expressing myself or painting. As I've gotten older, I've gotten more into that and I still think I'm way on the far side uh, of, you know, business and logic and illustration versus, you know, I want to paint things in my basement and hope when I'm dead people know I'm a genius, you know. Uh, and, and again, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's just so not me. That's so not what I am. So that I've swung a little bit that way and it's, you know, it, I kind of lost my train of thought. But <laughs> the point is people that finish things are better than people that don't. They're good people with better souls. No, but it is... It is something to be admired, and it is something to strive towards, uh, and that's why smaller goals are better, especially in the beginning. Um, my goal with the horror, this like a lot of people have said, like Mike Emmerich and a lot of other people have said, like, oh, I have this big, huge story. I've got that big, huge story, but I was like, I'm going to do a small story. I'm going to do the horror because I know it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it's not part of this big, ongoing saga, and it's just, you know, and I had written it was going to be 40 pages. Now it's like 120 
25, something like that. And it's done, you know, I'm gonna probably revise future issues as I go in, but it's, and I, that's a common story too, of like, oh, I thought it was 10 pages, turned out to be 60, you know, so my small project of a 40 page one shot book has turned into like a four or five issue series that all then collect into some sort of trade. And that's my small project. And I'm having a hard time getting issue one done. And I don't know if it's fear, fear of failure, fear of success, uh, or, or what, but I just have such a hard time making myself do it. And that disgusts me because I have opportunities that other people would kill for and I squander them uh, by reorganizing my DVD shelf and, you know, wiping down the kitchen counters and, you know, you know, putting some new stuff up on eBay for sale. Things that, yeah, need to be done, but could wait, could definitely wait. And uh, so I can't promise myself or you that I'm like full on real hardcore art mode like I should be because, again, small goals. This week, I don't have much going on. So my goal is to put in a serious day, a page a day, eight hours, something like that, every day this week. And hopefully I succeed. But hopefully, even if I fail by aiming for that, maybe I'll do four hours a day. Maybe I'll, you know, like, so I'm gonna aim for doing a hardcore week, and I, unless, it, it can only go good. It can only go well. Because even if I fail, I'll fail better than I've been succeeding. Because I've been like, oh, it's more than a half hour a day. Oh, it's more than a half hour a day. And it is. And I just wanna be clear, I'm not criticizing anyone else here. Everybody's got their own stuff to deal with. Everybody has their own things in their head and their life. I'm just talking about me and how disgusted I make myself. <laughs> so, it doesn't mean I'm disgusted with you guys. <laughs> or ladies. Or other. Non-gender. When I say guys, it's very non-gender specific. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and cut here. I was going to talk about prints, but I think that's going to have to wait for the next time.